everybody so today's video is going to be how i made my revision timetable now i wanted to make this video just to kind of show you how i did it and talk about sorry i've got a mimo in my mouth and to talk about the struggles that i went through when making a revision timetable um because you know it is quite the task especially for A-levels because there's so much to plan. A little disclaimer, basically. I have made my timetable to suit me and I tried so many different things that just didn't work for me that would work for so many people. But this is what's worked for me because it suits the way that my brain likes to think of things. So, you know, this video might not be helpful, but we'll see. Also, this is the second video of my revision week, so please go and watch yesterday's video if you haven't already and that was how to deal with exam stresses. I'm uploading every single day at 5 p.m. for the week, seven videos this week and if you are watching this say a week after I've uploaded this video then there will be a playlist for you to check out with all of my revision videos in from revision week which I'll link down in the description, the description which I will link down in the description okay let's begin so when i started thinking about making a revision timetable i knew i had to do it because it's just you know something you've got to do isn't it really um if you don't make a revision timetable you have all of the stresses of knowledge of what shall i do when just in your brain and it's just not organized it's all a blur and it's like oh i don't know what to do and then you end up doing nothing I thought, you know what, Georgie, bite the bullet, make a timetable. And to be honest, I wasn't expecting it to be that difficult. I started off by trying to write one on these little sheets of paper here. These I got from Tesco and you can see I wrote a few bits down. I did actually make another one as well. Um, but this is basically a weekly one. So this is kind of one day this is one day the next day etc and you know there's quite a lot of space for it and then there's a monthly one where you can fill in what to do each day but i just found that there was not enough space in these little boxes to fit what i wanted to do i felt like i was being a bit too specific as well and i don't think being specific each day is actually a good thing um I, you know, have come to find in my timetable that being less specific about what revision to do every day is actually better because on the day you can then decide what you want to do. If you roughly know what you want to get done by the end of the week, it doesn't matter when you do it, just make sure you get it done by the end of the week and in your head you'll know what you have to get done. Um, but if you want to make a little daily one as well, then obviously that's up to you. I like to kind of the night before the next day, um, just make a note of kind of what I want to do the next day. So it's not something I plan out months and months in advance because you won't stick to it, let's be real. Um, there's also things like this that you can use. Uh, these are like whiteboards. I got this, or actually my friends, Hang on, was this Steph? Yeah, my friend Steph got me this from the Flying Tiger and it's like a whiteboard um, version of um, like, I don't know, a monthly planner. So I actually would use this generally anyway. We have this in the kitchen and me and my family use it to kind of put things on what we're doing in the day. It is clean though for this video. Um, but yeah, I don't use this for revision for reasons I will discuss in a second. But yeah, obviously if it's whiteboard, you can just rub things off. So that's a really handy one that you could um, potentially use. Also, just wanted to let you know, this is my um, timetable for when my exams are. So I've written down when all my exams are on what, de what day, and this is obviously in the month of June. Um, and I have 10 exams in total. And my last exam is on the 20th of June. And then I go on holiday on the 23rd of June with my friends. So that's really exciting. So it's kind of like somewhere to work up to and I can just see them all out there. So it's a good job I wrote all them down. So obviously you can use kind of paper ones, you can print timetables offline that you can do, or you could literally just make one yourself, which is what I did. So I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so the one that I actually did was I grabbed my laptop. This is my MacBook. I'm just reading off my notes at the minute. And I made a timetable from here. I will hopefully remember to do a cutaway of my actual timetable to show you. Um, there's a few things I need to update for maths because I've re you know, re-decided how I want to revise. Originally, I had planned out what I wanted to do, but I've changed my mind and I've checked, decided to use something else. But you'll see that in a later video when I talk about how I revise for maths. 
but basically I use the notes on my MacBook, so you could just use Word, anything like that. And I'll use an example of chemistry. Basically on my chemistry one, hopefully there's an overlay on the screen, um, I have planned week by week. I didn't want it to be looking like a monthly planner like the ones I've just shown you because that just doesn't work in my brain. I just felt like there was too little, you know, I had to condense the information down. It was too specific to each day. So I thought I'd make it a weekly thing and kind of what I wanted to get done each week for that particular subject. So I'm revising from the revision guides for the subject. I won't talk about how I revise too much because there is a video coming up for these subjects this week. Um, but I like to go from the revision guides. So I kind of went through the book and, and thought, how many pages can I roughly do each day? Say four to six. And then I would count, you know, up to that page I would times that by seven for seven days. Then I'd be like, week two, I'm gonna be reading module six revision of the CGP book up to 197. And I am still in week two currently. So today is Sunday, this is my last day. And I think I'm three pages off 197. So I'm sticking to my timetable really well. And I've only got three pages to do today, which is really good. You're not putting too much pressure on specific pages each day. I feel like that's just too much for me and it's just too much planning and just roughly knowing what you have to get done by the end of the week means that um, if you do leave it all to last minute, then you've got to do it all the last minute. Um, do you know what I mean? Like it, it's not something so, so organized because otherwise I just feel a bit weird. Um, another thing that I would do in week two is to complete and mark practice questions for module five. Um, I started doing that this week and you know, that is absolutely 100% the most effective thing is doing questions. I was doing questions on acids and bases and you know, you just start to realize how repetitive questions are. I use the questions from um, the website Physics and Maths Tutor. That's an excellent website. I'll try and link it down below if I remember, but they have questions for maths, chemistry, biology, and probably other subjects, but um, obviously physics as well, um, but they're just the ones that I use and there's so many questions that you can answer for each exam board, it's different. Um, so I use those and it just shows how repetitive the questions are um, and the practice honestly does, you know, make, practice makes perfect basically. Um, and also I have written down here to watch videos on the tricky stuff for module five that I don't understand just yet, like buffers in module five for chemistry, um, just as an example, I really struggle with. So I will watch a YouTube video, watch that video, make notes on it and kind of go through that as well. Um, so that's what I'd write down. So I'm not very specific at all. And that's what works for me is the fact that it's very simplistic and it's not specific. And I'll do that for week three, week four, week five. It's quite repetitive what I do each week, but it's just kind of so I know the page numbers to get up to and just to kind of remind myself, oh yeah, this is what I should be doing. And then once I've done it, I can tick it off. As you can see, week one, I've ticked off both of those because that was last week. So I've done that. Um, and then as we get up to week seven, I've included some past papers in there to do as well. And then after that is exams. So by all means, have a look at what I've shown you on the screen. Um, have a look at my timetable. It might inspire you to do a similar thing, just to kind of keep it simplistic um, as to what to do but this is just the way I like to work it. Another example is my biology one. Again, it's talking about the pages and what days I want to do those pages on. For example, um, week two up to page 29, and that's just Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So that wasn't Monday or Tuesday. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I have got planned. And I've planned it all the way up to, um, the bottom and as you can see at the bottom i've realized that i actually haven't left enough time um for practice papers so at the bottom i put past papers need to fit in somewhere so update this plan gg when you can i'm um, talking to myself um so basically i'm going to try and do extra work each week than what i planned on here so that i can fit practice papers in a little bit more because i have to do that um and then my exams i'm not going to show you my maths ones because they're not fully done sorry if my face keeps going blurry it's just not sure where i am um i'm here but you know apparently it doesn't know that um yeah i'm not going to show you my maths ones because i haven't properly done them and i just don't want to show you something that i'm actually not going to do um but i will be doing a video on how i revise chemistry biology and maths 
and that video will actually be suitable for GCSE and A level um, but that will be coming up later on in the week but make sure that you do plan all the way up to your exams but leaving time for practice papers make sure that you don't fit too much into your timetable each week because if you try and fit sorry why is my face so blurry um anyway because if you try and fit too much work in each week then you're just not going to get it done let's be real um and you're going to feel stressed you're going to feel left behind um so just plan what you know you can get done but obviously if you can't get it all done before the exams then you're going to have to fit more in each week but do you know what i mean I also think making a separate timetable for each subject like I've done is actually quite beneficial. I feel like it means that it's not too kind of in your face. I think often if you've got one timetable with every single subject on it, it can look quite daunting and quite confusing. Whereas if it's just each subject on a separate one, you can look at each one separately, you know, and think, okay, have I done that for chemistry? Yes, tick or no, I need to do that. You know, that kind of thing. So it's not just too much information all on one page can look quite scary. And obviously as you're revising and doing the revision, keep checking back at your timetable, making sure you're on track changing it if you need to there's nothing wrong with going back and amending things and changing it like i'm doing um, that kind of thing and also make sure just my last point here make sure that you make one no matter what even if it is too late you think oh it's too late to make one no it is not if anything you need to make one at that point in time because if you if it's got to the point where you haven't revised hardly anything you need to know how much you how much time you have to do that in so you need to know how much time you've got left and you might only be able to skim over certain topics but you need to know how much time you have for each topic revision timetables are beneficial to everybody at any time of the year so make sure you do one as simplistic or as complicated as you want just do it because it will clear your mind and make you feel so much better. I felt like a weight had been lifted and thrown a mile. Okay, so just do it. So that is the end of this video. I know it's not like the most kind of helpful in a way. It's just kind of showing how I did a timetable and a little bit of advice. Um, but if you want to know how to deal with exam stress, then watch yesterday's video, um, which was dealing with exam stress. So give the video a thumbs up if you're excited for some more revision videos. And remember to stay tuned at 5 p.m every single day this week for a new video subscribe because i do a lot of revision videos and i will be doing some more a levely videos and just just videos in general make sure to subscribe and i will see you in my next video hopefully goodbye